Hey, brothers and sisters. I take no pleasure in doing this. I've had this video up on my computer for a long time, um, thinking about doing a video about it. This is about Terry Mewson and Pat Robertson and the 700 Club. It's called Bring It Online, Remarriage After Divorce. And actually, I've never, I've never really called it out, but this woman who was Miss America um, is divorced and remarried, and her second husband just passed away over the weekend. And the strange thing was, I was talking uh, to a friend uh, um, on Sunday about this problem because there are so many people in Christian circles who are divorced and remarried. So I'm going to uh, play a little bit of this and show you why this is a great deception. It's a great deception all over the world, but it's terrible that this is what's going on in Christianity. And I'm not trying to beat up on her that, you know, her second husband has died and she was his second wife. I'm hoping that by doing this video, somehow she will find out that she needs to repent and and get right with the Lord because she's not right with the Lord even though she does all of these wonderful works. So listen to some of this. This is from Don Pat who says, is it a sin to remarry after divorce? What are grounds for divorce and is remarriage okay? Um, this is something I might add the Catholic Church has finally started to take hold of. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, the church has made this very, very tough. Uh, there was a time that Jesus got kind of legalistic, and uh, it's been confusion ever since. Now, did you hear that? Jesus got legalistic. Jesus got legalistic. Jesus, who is God, and made the law of marriage. And uh, Pat Robertson, he died not too long ago also. He said, if anybody uh, gets divorced and remarried except for the cause of, uh, of, of adultery or infidelity. And that's not what he said. He said, for the cause of fornication. I will go over those scriptures as I have done many times before because I love people. I love people. I don't want them to be deceived by men or women. And her name is Terry and my name is Terry. We even spell it the same way or fornication, uh, they're uh, committing adultery. Uh, so there's one ground, and the Apostle Paul brought in, if you're married to an unbeliever, and the unbeliever wants to leave you, then you're not bound under those circumstances. So that's called the Pauline privilege. But I think there's more than that. I think there's constructive desertion. I think we need to understand that there can be such cruelty that a human being can't live with the spouse. Uh, but uh, I, I just think that we're trapping people in, in uh, can be a hell on earth, but I, I, we don't want to loosen up marriage so that uh, you just jump in and out of marriage. And right now, the, you know, they say about non-fault divorce laws, it's like a turkey uh, voting for Thanksgiving. I mean, it just, <laughs> it, it's destroyed women. It really has. So no-fault divorce has not been a good thing. But I'll you ask, is it sin? That. Uh, the Bible is pretty clear about what it is, and so I am not uh, authorized to go beyond that, but I'm talking about unbeliever leaves you. I think what I would call constructive desertion, you can't live with them because they're so nasty. Uh, I think, uh, on the other hand, uh, immorality uh, is, is a breaking of the marriage contract, and therefore the spouse is free. Uh, marriage is not a contract. Marriage is a covenant. Beyond that, there, there are no biblical grounds for divorce and remarriage. You can get divorced, you can separate, but it's the remarriage part you're concerned mm -hmm. about. Okay. This is John Pat who says... Okay, so that was that. So here is her story. This is on a devotion she wrote called The God of Second Chances. And she said that... It, um, it was very common knowledge in the community that I was a Christian and the publicity of going through a divorce was difficult. That winter I would 
went home at the end of each day to a cold, silent house, emotionally depressed and grieved. I would then climb into the bed with my hat, coat, and boots on and sleep until morning. And sometime that spring, I became aware of, you know, that I needed to move on. I began to move on. I had no intention of dating and no interest in pursuing a new relationship. Though I loved children, I had accepted that there would be none in my first marriage. I was in my 30s, and the prospect of marriage and a family seemed remote and unlikely, yet God had other plans. Now, the thing is, she went, when she got married, and I don't know her if I don't know if her first husband is still alive. I don't know if the second husband who just died, I don't know if his first wife is still alive. There's a lot to this. But the when she first got married to I think his name is Tom, she went to Los Angeles and left him in Milwaukee for two years. So she could pursue her acting and singing career because she had been Miss America. So she wasn't, as a Christian, submitting to her husband, which 1 Corinthians 7 says you're supposed to submit. Well, Ephesians 5 says you're supposed to submit to your husband. But also, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, let me, let me show you this. Well, let me go ahead and read this, and then I'll come back to this. She said... Um, I was in my 30s and the prospect of marriage and a family seemed remote and unlikely. So, it's, And she says, yet God had other plans. No, Terry had other plans. I met Andy uh, Friedrich at a retirement celebration for a co-worker. He had gone through a divorce a number of years before that. And after much floundering and searching, a friend had led him to Christ. Well, the friend should have said, don't get married again, because that's what the Bible says. But no one had discipled him, so he had little knowledge of the scriptures and wasn't in a church or study group of any kind. Initially, we met to talk about the Lord. In time, I grudgingly conceded to a date, but not without apprehension. I was gun shy. I love that. He was he was faithful, trustworthy, and committed to the Lord and to me. We were married a little more than a year after we began dating. And the thing is, this woman was in this remarriage for 42 years. I have been in my covenant marriage for 41 years, even though my husband has been in his adulterous remarriage for 11 years. I'm keeping my vows. She, if her first husband is still alive, she is still married to him. So let's get to what the Bible, because this is ridiculous. This is, these are people that are known as Christians who, you know, this is the Christian Broadcasting Network and Pat Robertson and all of that. It's like they, they say, oh, this is what the Bible says, but it's not what the Bible says. So let's go to that. So I'm just going to show you, this is just rough because I'm just talking, but this is uh, the app that I use to create some of my videos. And Jesus, so when, when Jesus heard Pat Robertson say he was being a legalist, Jesus was like, what, are you joking? I said, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is divorced, doth commit adultery. That's Jesus speaking. Let me show you the scriptures. And you know, my tone of voice, I'm, I'm not mad. I don't hate these people. I hate what they're doing to the word of God. I love Jesus. I love the Bible. I would rather die than, than to um, fail to acknowledge him in all my ways. I would rather die than to, not, to deny Jesus. Okay, so this, uh, Jesus defined adultery. Yes, he did say to look with lust is the same as adultery. Uh, I really need to redo this thing because obviously also if you're having sex with someone who's married, that's committing adultery also. Okay, then 
on this slide. Two is to divorce and marry another. And three is to marry a divorced person. You know, I know most people don't care about this. It's like our society is just so messed up. But Matthew 5, 28 through 32, and Matthew 19, 3 through 12, there is an exception clause for fornication, which is pornea. And pornea is not adultery, makia. So Pat Robertson lied. He lied when he said it's for sexual morality, adultery. It's for fornication, premarital sex. And then these are the scriptures, Mark 10, 1 through 12, Luke 16, 14 through 18, Romans 7, 1 through 3. I'll remind you that Romans 7 is right after Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11 and 39. And if you go to 1 Corinthians 7, you know, you can just stop the video here and just do a Bible study yourself. But 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 1 and 2 talks about that each man should have his own wife so that he will not be uh, fornication, which is premarital sex. And that when you get married, you're, the wife's body belongs to the husband and the husband's body belongs to the wife. How can a Christian wife get married and then go leave her husband for two years? That's not a Christian wife, Terry. That's not a Christian wife. And, you know, no wonder, who knows what it was like when she came back. And I think they stayed married for like another three to five years. I'm not sure. And then Hebrews 13, 4 and Ephesians 5, 31. So let's see. Couples in an adulterous remarriage do not believe that they will go to hell, even though 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers shall inherit the kingdom of God. And here's somebody who thinks they're going to heaven. I think there's a promise that remarital adulterers are led into the gates of heaven. Crossing my fingers on this one. Y'all know that there are people who've had dreams about, you know, going down to hell and seeing divorced and remarried people in hell. Where is the verse that says adulterers go to heaven? It does not. It does not. Okay, so now we're into Mark chapter 10, verse 6. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. This is a young man leaving his father and mother and cleaving to his wife. And they twain, the, they too, shall become one flesh so then they are no more twain they're no more two people but one flesh what therefore god hath joined together let no man put asunder god's not saying you know oh oh you were just young and made a mistake no he really said he witnessed your coming together as one flesh and he says he let not man put asunder and in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter and he saith unto them whosoever same as the whosoever for god so loved the world that whosoever shall believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life john three sixteen. that's the same whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her and if a woman shall put away her husband, and I do not know, I don't know if Terry or Tom, who did the, who did the divorcing, you know, they, they scrub a lot of this stuff. They don't want people to find stuff out about them. Uh, but if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. So Terry and the man who just passed away, they were committing adultery for 42 years. Terry needs to repent. She needs to repent. She's adopted, they adopted seven children. She's got a mission, you know, uh, Operation Blessing or something. She has a real heart for orphans. But no. And then, you know, everybody's talking about an abomination of the homosexual 
agenda because God calls it an abomination. Yes, he does. He calls the homosexual lifestyle an abomination. But look, he says it here talking about divorce or marriage. Luke 16, 14 through 18. And the Pharisees also who were covetous, it's all about the money, heard, and the thing was, the Pharisees were the legalists, not Jesus. The Pharisees were the legalists. They were like trying to pick little little uh, nuances in the law as to why you could be getting divorced and remarried. They were the ones who said you could be divorced and remarried. This is Jesus speaking. They were deriding Jesus. They were hating Jesus. And Jesus is the giver of the law, and the law is good. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. And the law and the prophets were until John, since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marry another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. One flesh until death is what he is saying. And so... You can do all these wonderful things. I mean, really, it's wonderful to adopt seven children. It's wonderful to have, uh, you know, a, a popular TV program. And I'm sure she's made a lot of money and she has books and all this other stuff. But this is where you get these people that are divorced and remarried. They're living in adultery and they do a lot of good works. They do a lot of good works. But we know what God says about that. Okay, Romans 7, 1 through 3. Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, although she be married to another man. So the thing is, Pat Robertson is saying that there's a Pauline privilege, which is what all of these churches say, Pauline privilege. Romans 7, 1 through 3 was written by Paul. Paul isn't giving some privilege for getting remarried unless the husband has died. Paul is agreeing with Jesus that marriage, the law of marriage, is one man to one woman, one flesh, until death depart. And then this is 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, the Lord Jesus, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. You know, there are people that are saying put away doesn't mean divorce. Of course it means divorce. And let not the husband divorce his wife. And if the woman does leave, she must remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And then verse 39. The wife is bound by law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. So this man who just died is not Terry's husband. Her first husband is her husband. And I don't know whether he is alive or dead. But the thing is, if she were to repent and read the Bible and do what the, she could really make some big impact 
on Christians because she has promoted her life of being an adulteress. And then, you know, she's going to have to deal with the fact that this second husband, that she's his second wife, he died and he went to hell. He went to hell. It's a terrible, terrible thing. He's a nice man. Everybody loved him. But adulterers do not go to heaven. Marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is to be undefiled. For fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. You know, it's like people say, oh, oh, you're judging me. You're judging me. I'm like, no, I'm trying to warn you. God is going to judge you. If we don't warn, we have blood on our hands. But I don't want blood on my hands. There's a reason why I love Jesus and I love his word. And, you know, there's great, great hope of heaven and reward of heaven. But hell is real and adulterers will be judged to go to hell. And Ephesians 5, 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Paul is repeating the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 10. So these churches are lying to you about this Pauline exception. They are lying. And here's another very famous adulteress, Amy Grant. Amy Grant. So Vince Gill divorced or married his divorced his wife and remarried Amy Grant, and Amy Grant divorced her husband and remarried Vince Gill, the divorced man. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if the woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. This is Jesus in Mark 10, 11, and 12. It's not, it's not funny. It's really, really, really sad. Really sad. And then let's look at Revelation. And the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it whose face who, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works so in this case the works that Terry and her second husband did are dead works they're dead works they were kind. I mean, you know, they were helping orphans. That's kind. That's good. But it's not to be credited to them because they were living in adultery. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found, written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20. But for the cowardly and the unbelieving. So, a coward who is a believer. And abominable. It's an abomination from Luke 16 to be divorced and remarried. And to make excuses for yourself. It's an abomination. And murderers. And sexually immoral people. Including adultery and fornicators and homosexuals and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Sadly, these people were living a lie and they were lying to people. Pat Robertson was lying to people and he is dead now. What about that? Their part will be in the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 21, 8. There's nothing funny about this saying that Jesus is a legalist. There's nothing funny, Pat Robertson, Terry Mewson. This is not funny. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, 
let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Revelation twenty-two eleven. And I have a list of false teachers. This was another thing that I was working on. These are wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, they're just really too many to even show. I've got a list of all these people. But you see down at the bottom, this is Pat Robertson here. That's Pat Robertson, who lied about divorce and remarriage. This is Greg Locke, who is a pastor who uh, divorced his wife and went off and married his secretary. This one is someone that everybody knows. John MacArthur. John MacArthur says you can be divorced and remarried. He's got a lot of stuff on his website about being divorced and remarried. Andy Stanley, who told his church with my husband in it, and I was actually a member of it too, um, he told them that you had to wait two to ten, he said you had to wait two years before you could get married again. Guess who else said that? Martin Luther. Martin Luther said from two to ten years, if you waited after divorce, that you could get remarried. Martin Luther, the founder of Protestant Protestantism. Mike Winger, he's got a video over his, what, 200 hours that he studied this, and then he says you can get divorced or remarried. And then Todd Friel, who is with Wretched, I met with him uh, I think it was in April. He's got like three, two or three videos saying you can be divorced or remarried. I met with him. I gave him um, uh, the book by Dr. Joseph Webb, Divorce and Remarriage, The Trojan Horse Within the Church. He does not agree. He's reformed. He's connected with, by his board, with John MacArthur. So... I don't know what else to tell people, really. But I'm going to keep on telling him because if if Terry would repent, if Terry, Terry, listen to Terry. Terry, if you would repent and correct your sins that you've been doing for all these years, you could lead many to Christ. You could lead many to Christ with your platform. And you're not saved yourself. That's what's so sad. You're not saved yourself. It's really sad. It's really sad. And I'm not, you know, I'm not bashing the seven children that y'all adopted. But those seven children need to know what Jesus said about your marriage. And hopefully some of them actually are saved and do know that this was adultery. Maybe they actually were reading the Bible better than their mom who was so busy being on TV. Divorce and remarriage is adultery. And I know plenty of people whose parents were divorced and remarried. And they came to a knowledge of the truth. So I'm praying that those seven children, they will come to a knowledge of the truth. And Terry, I'm praying that you will come to a knowledge of the truth. And you will tell people that you were wrong. You'll study your Bible and know that you were wrong. You can't do anything about him because he's in, you know, he's in hell now. But you can save yourself. And I hope that you will. All right. Thanks for anybody who watched. Let's just pray for these people. Let's pray for these people. But you can't pray for people that have already died. I can't pray for Pat Robertson for being a false teacher. I can't pray for people who've died. Um, you know, that's necromancy and that's false. You can't do that. And I really am not angry at these people. I'm passionate about this because I'm trying to snatch people from the fires of hell. I'm trying to snatch them from hell because 
Hell is forever and ever and ever eternal torment. All right. Thanks for anybody who watched and pray with me for these people. God bless you, Maranatha. Jesus is coming soon. He is coming soon. Don't be living in sin. Be holy as he is holy. God bless you, Maranatha.